Sprinkler shares on the move after its first quarter earnings report, seeing a beat on the top and bottom line. The New York-based software company was founded in 2009 and went public via IPO in 2021. Now, it powers software for customer experience management of large corporations such as Microsoft, L'Oreal, Cisco and Samsung. Joining us now is founder and CEO Raji Thomas. And also joining us is Yahoo Finance's Brad Smith here for the conversation as well. Big welcome to you both here. So, Raji, walk us through the quarter that was. And especially when we see how much of this was driven by this high subscription revenue. Well, well, thank you, Brad. Great to see you again. Uh, we w- the quarter was an excellent one. We had a beat on pretty much every metric. Uh, reported revenues of one hundred and seventy three point four million dollars, which is a year over year growth of twenty percent. And subscription revenues came in higher. At growth percentage was higher at twenty four percent. And I think what was surprising for most on the street was the fact that we also posted $11 million of uh, non-GAAP operating income. I think what the street was also paying close attention to, and and it's great to see you, Raji, really paying attention to this guidance here. And and so what are you seeing within the relationship, what you're hearing from some of your customers right now that gives you confidence to come back out to the street and communicate that there's a, a strong amount of demand that is really going to benefit Sprinkler? Well, it, it it was cool to to connect with you know the few hundred customers I was able to connect and talk to in the last several um, twelve months. Um, what we are hearing consistently from all customers across industries that we serve. Now, keep in mind, these are some of the largest companies in the world. What we're hearing is that the the what's going on in front office technology, customer facing technology is unsustainable. When you think about a large global company, let's take a Microsoft or a Samsung or a Dell or um, any of the large global companies, you, you're talking about large businesses that have multiple business units, some case like 40, 50, 60 business units, which are large companies in of itself. Each business unit operates in, I don't know, 50, sometimes 100 markets. And in each market, they're doing customer service, they're doing marketing, they're doing advertising, they're doing voice of customer um, surveys and insights and sales. And and in marketing in the UK, they're using five to 15 channels. And now think about a consumer or a customer of that brand on the other side. They're, it, it, it's cacophony. It, they, It's impossible for a large company to stay on brand and create consistent brand messaging across all these channels, across all these functions, across all these markets and across all these business units. And we have stuffed the front office with somewhere between 50 and 75 point solutions on an average, almost in every function. It's unsustainable because they don't talk to each other. You can't see the customer across these systems so I'll give you the example of a large credit card company whose contact center, which is replaced and upgraded with Sprinkler. Before Sprinkler, if you emailed the agent, the email customer service agent was just unable to use any other channel. So if you ask for a credit limit increase on email, he had to wait to for the customer to respond back if you ask a question. Now you hit the phone button. Hey, sir, can you provide your supporting evidence for your income? And then boom, you know, the case that would have taken a week now takes 20 minutes to close. Sounds like, uh, you know, on the productivity front, that's a huge benefit for some of these companies. And on that topic of productivity, what we've continued to hear and track over the course of this earnings season is any mention of artificial intelligence and and generative AI. When you think about your own business, I I see you smiling, I see you laughing at this one. But at the end of the day, investors also want to know, all right, for a company that has a founder CEO like Raji Thomas, how you're thinking about generative AI with some of the existing sprinkler framework and where that could potentially benefit some of your customers that are looking for better productivity. Right, that's a great question coming from you. I'm I'm sure you recall that we had almost seven pages describing our artificial intelligence in our IPO prospectus. So for first, first off, AI is something that we've been talking about and our entire platform has been built on for the last five years, and it's a core differentiator for Sprinkler. Let me just help everybody understand the way we see AI and what we see happening now. Yes, there's a lot of buzz about generative AI now. There's plenty of companies that are jumping in, introducing product SKUs, 
And most of them are doing something very simple. They have a, a, a developer or a small team making a call to an open AI API and putting the results back and it looks cool. Let me tell you what the problem is. If you don't control the data set that the AI is trained on, if you're training your AI models on unbound data sets, your results, your outcome is gonna be unpredictable. In the enterprise world, we now have countries that are running on Sprinkler. Qatar government cannot afford to have Coca-Cola, Microsoft, McDonald's, JP Morgan Chase, Citibank, they can't afford to have unpredictable outcomes in the front office. It has to be on brand, it has to be compliant. So there's a lot more rigor. You can't afford when you know Bot makes a mistake or or Chat GPT makes a mistake, that's fun. It's and it's a joke. But <laughs> brands can't afford to do that. So what we have done for the last five years is we have developed over 2,000 models actually hundreds of models custom done for customers. And these models have been trained on pretty much all publicly available data in over hundred languages. And we make over 10 billion predictions a day. Every part of Sprinkler is built on, on AI. And what we are able to do with generative AI now is to take cryptic messages that we're doing in terms of AI driven generation. I'll give you an example. In the contact center, we had something called a smart response that would allow the agent to suggest a response. And before generative AI, it was just kind of cryptic. We would parse through all the cases in the past and say, hey, suggest this option right. as a way to fix. With generative AI, we can give them an entire script. So we're seeing 300% increase in adoption of that feature with generative AI. But there are like, hundreds and thousands of AI features and mm -hmm. generative AI is giving us wings for our AI capability. So Raji, in terms of the growth story from here, I mean, you, I know you opened a new R&D hub in India as well, but on the other hand, you have regulators sort of really trying to figure out how they can put some guardrails around AI. How do you sort of focus on the growth story while keeping an eye on what regulators might have planned as well? We are very, very, very early in in uh, in the AI revolution, it's going to be a quantum leap. I think I'm a fan of responsible AI. I think we've seen this in crypto. We've seen this in social. I think I think we should come up with frameworks very early on and not wait for game changing technology like AI to grow without control. And then you're gonna have a lot of companies go out of business because people get just pumped up and a lot of people lose money. And so I'm a fan of responsible AI. I'm a fan of you know common sense regulations that allow companies like Sprinkler and Google and Facebook and others who work on AI to, to put stuff out there responsibly. Hey, Raji, just while we have you, you mentioned advertising right now and, and typically during an economic downturn, uh, advertising is one of the first marketing spends to go. Uh, we're mm -hmm. going to be at CanLine speaking with a, a range of chief marketing officers, perhaps some of the clients that you work with as well. And I'm, I'm wondering, you know, even as we're thinking about the impending economic downturn that has been widely telegraphed, can marketing, can advertising do enough to get some of these companies through the other side or to generate enough demand to get companies through a downturn? And we only You're have about 30 on. seconds. We're spot on. There's a pullback on advertising and marketing spend. People are stepping back to see how it shakes out before spending again. The good news is we have put about 80% of our energy into our contact center product, which is like taking off. And our thesis is that we bring customer service and marketing and sales together so we can transform those agents into sales you know, salespeople, and then really convert your contact center into a revenue center. Well, it's been absolutely fantastic having you on and breaking all this down for us. Ranji Thomas there, Sprinkler founder and CEO, and our very own Brad Smith. Thank you both.